Hello, I'm George Cairns, and in this video lesson, we're going to use Digital Photo Professional 4 to share our photographs to a variety of destinations. Now, here's some shots that I've tweaked to get the colours and tones looking their best. I've also cropped them as well to improve composition and straighten wonky horizons, etc. And once you've got your photographs looking the way you want them to, you want to share them and make sure that they still look as good in print or online as they do on your computer screen. Now, unfortunately, a printer produces colours in a different way to a computer screen. So what you see on screen may look quite different when you print it out and may be quite disappointing as well. So if you're going to do a lot of printing and you want the colours on screen to look similar to the colours in the printer, you may want to pop up to the main menu here and go to Preferences and set Colour Management's default workspace to Adobe RGB, which creates a narrower colour space on your computer screen, but it's more compatible with what the printer is capable of reproducing. Basically, your computer screen can produce many more colours than your printer can reproduce. So this is good to stick to Adobe RGB if you're planning to print your pictures. However, if you plan to share online, then you may want to make use of the millions of colours that your computer screen can reproduce. So you can stick to standard RGB if you're going to share online in a web gallery, for example. And in this case, I'm going to do just that. So I'm going to leave my default work colour space set to sRGB. You can change the colour space at any time, as I'll show you in just a tick. Let's go down to have a look at colour matching settings now. And you may have a printer attached and you may have a printing profile that takes into account the kind of ink and the paper used with your printer. So you can choose a profile from here. And it's worth spending some time to think about rendering in intense. This is how the photographs are shown on your computer screen according to colour space. If you're planning to actually print them, then you may want to use relative colour metric because that forces the photographs to have a narrower colour space so the photo is going to look similar on screen to the print version. However, if we go to perceptual, then the photographs are going to have more of a wider colour space. So the colours that you see when you're working on them in Digital Photo Professional 4 are going to look the same when they're shared on a web gallery, for example. So in this case, I'm going to share my photographs online, so I'll stick to perceptual. So what I see on screen when working in Digital Photo Professional 4 is going to look the same when I share it in a web gallery. And one last thing in relation to printing or sharing online is to go to general settings and by default, the output resolution of any photographs that you create, if you save them as JPEGs, for example, is going to be a rather large 350 dots per inch or pixels per inch. And that's going to create a huge file if you're going to share it online. It's much too big, uh, but it will look great in print. If you are sharing online, you can drop this down to a smaller size, such as 100 dots per inch, and that will create a lighter weight file as well, which is easier to upload to a web gallery. And it's not going to look huge on screen either. It's going to fit nicely into a Facebook gallery, for example. So I'm happy with my preferences. I'm going to click OK. And despite your preference settings, you can change your mind in relation to color space at any time. Let's click on a photograph, pop up to the main menu, go to adjustment and down to color space here. And we can set that to sRGB for the web or Adobe RGB for print. We're now ready to share our photographs and you can select a photograph, of course, and go up to File and go to Convert and Save. And it's going to take this edited raw file and enable you to save it as a JPEG, for example, and you can change the resolution to a nice print friendly resolution or something smaller if you're planning to email it on later on. But if you want to process a whole batch of photographs and export them for a web gallery, for example, and they all need to be a particular size, then what we can do is click on a photo and then shift click to select our batch and then we can pop up and choose file and this time we're going to go to batch process and that pops this window here and here you've got the option to set a destination folder you can use the same folder as the original files or you can click use this folder and then browse to a folder such as the one i've created on my desktop called my web gallery so i'll click open there and my resized photographs are all going to go into that folder now at the moment, they're all raw files, but I'm going to convert them to a web-friendly JPEG. So I can choose that from here. And if they're going online, I'm going to drop it down from a print size 350 to a web-friendly 100 dots per inch. And when you drop this to 100 dots per inch, it's going to scale down the size of the photographs automatically. But you might want them to fit into a specific picture frame, for example, or be a particular size for a web page. So let's go down to resize and we can choose inches for photo frames, for example, or pixels for sharing online. At the moment, these are quite large because they're from a big digital camera, but we can then change the width to something smaller. Before we do that, make sure you tick lock aspect ratio, otherwise you'll squash or stretch your photographs unless this is ticked. I can type in a smaller width now of a thousand, and then when I click in height, it automatically preserves the proportions to create 1000 by 1500 pixel size at 100 dots per inch. So that's much lighter compared to the original giant raw files that we had straight from our Canon. 
And finally, we can choose the way we're going to name our photographs. We can add a prefix. I'm going to type in Croatia because that's where the photographs are from. And the sequence number, we can start at double zero one, like so. Now we're ready to convert our photographs into the JPEGs of a specific size. And to do that, I'm going to click Execute. And that exports and converts the photographs into the specific size and resolution that I chose. And in fact, you can see here that they've got very small sizes now. That's 1.1 megabyte for that particular picture. So these are going to be really easy to upload to a web gallery or share via email. And finally, you might want to print a photograph. So here's our original high quality edited raw files. Let's just click on this one here and let's just check by going to the main menu that it's in a print friendly color space such as Adobe RGB. Yep. So that should look pretty similar in print as to what it does on screen. And if I pop up to here, I can choose print and that pops the print dialog window. So there's my printer in this drop down menu here and I'm going to use the default settings and I want to make sure my orientation is on portrait, which it is rather than on landscape. So I get most of the paper printed with the photograph rather than wasting any of that valuable printer paper. And let's just go down as well to this option here, which is quality and media, because this is quite crucial. If you're using good quality printer paper, then you want to make sure you change the media type to a photo paper and choose the appropriate paper like so. Otherwise, you get rather muddy and drab colors. If you use plain paper, it just absorbs the ink. And then you're ready to increase the quality as well to high to get the best looking print. This should look pretty similar to what you've got on Digital Photo Professional for screen as well, because you're using a print friendly profile such as Adobe RGB 1998. So I'm now happy to click print.